Welcome to Politics and Rollers, the podcast where each episode we look at the mechanics behind the UK political system. I'll be talking to women who'll be weaving me through some of the things that maybe I didn't know enough about and wanted to know more. And no offence to all the men out there, but I'm just a little bit tired of men telling me how I feel about politics, what I should think. There are more than enough women in this country who are experts, who are brilliant, who've got an awful lot to say. So jump aboard. My name's Michelle, and this is Politics and Rollers. There is one particular aspect of the political landscape that suddenly gets thrown into the spotlight in the run-up to a general election. It's absolutely everywhere, there's lots of analysis, there's data, there's statistics. It's one of my favourite things, and that is political polling. I'm delighted I'm here with Emma Levin today, and Emma is from Savanta. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. My name's Emma, I'm an Associate Director here at Savanta um, in our political um, sort of research team. So yeah, looking forward to talking to you about some polling today. So Emma, I invited you on because we are going to have a general election. You know, every month that goes along, it gets closer to when we might get one. So at some point in 2024, and in the very latest, it'll roll into 25. So obviously, things must be gearing up in the polling world. Why don't you tell me, Emma, what is polling? Fundamentally, polling and what people can are kind of familiar with in just general surveying are are sort of one and the same. Polling generally refers to the sort of political subset of the wider market research industry. But really, our job is just asking the public what they think and and, and allowing them the opportunity to tell us. That's polling. Who requests polling? So, you know, who is the customer, if you like? Yeah, it's it's a good question. And it's one that that not necessarily people know, because a lot of polling happens um, and gets published about and a lot of it doesn't necessarily. So we work at Savanta in in our team with a with a wide wide range of of clients. And, you know, that that can be government departments, it can be political parties themselves, it can be media organisations looking to commission their own polling. We do a lot of work with charities who are looking to to get some figures to help their campaigns, um, think tanks, you know, just a very, very wide variety of, of people who, who, you know, might have any buy-in in, in the political process and want some some data and some figures to, to back up their, their campaigns or whatever they're looking to explore. So it is it can be very varied. All things politics then, polling and asking the public how they're feeling about voting. It's one of the big things that people want to know. So from a basic perspective, Emma, why is this so important? The importance of of polling and how much it dominates um, the agenda, you know, in between elections and in the run up to elections is, you know, some people would say we talk about it too much, but it is really vital. And you, you kind of think that the only time the public have to sort of put their views across and tell politicians what they're thinking is, you know, every few years at the ballot box. Polling allows us to know, OK, Boris Johnson was very popular in 2019. He's now not as popular. We kind of need that check in in between elections to know what, what the public thinks. Political parties do a lot of a lot of polling of, you know, developing, developing policy developing messaging, you know, making sure they're communicating with the voters appropriately. But polling really can can provide quite stark numbers to governments and, and campaigns. So it's it's really important for the accountability and, and running of a, a strong democracy, really. Interesting. So now, Emma, in 2015, the election didn't necessarily, the result of the election wasn't necessarily how the polling had been predicting <clears throat> right the way up to that It is 10 o'clock, the polls have closed, the general election is over. But just yesterday, everyone, all the pollsters saying this was too close to call. We have to wait until all the votes have been counted. Well, the exit polls are very striking. They're completely at odds with all of the opinion polls we've had for the last six weeks. We need to treat this exit poll with extreme caution. Laura Donald, would you believe that that an exit poll, if this exit poll is remotely accurate, would there be any need for uh, coalition negotiations or would David Cameron uh, simply carry on? I've just been to see Her Majesty the Queen and I will now form a majority Conservative government. Have there been changes since 2015 
just to reassure people or I'm, I'm generally just out of curiosity yeah I know there was an inquiry and there were some yep. responses to that so what what happened there do you think yeah I mean it's it's a it's a really good question and I think it's something that the polling industry is always very careful of that you know polls are a, a snapshot in time they are an estimate of what we think the public's opinion is it's not completely foolproof and often when it you know when elections get very close which that 2015 one was it can you know small small margins of error either way can lead to you know different interpretations you know in that instance everyone kind of assumed there was going to be another coalition and the polls were suggesting it was closer than in the end it ended up being I was I was thankfully not not in the job at that point, so <laughs> I wasn't having to sort of face face the inquiries and, and the what's got wrong what's gone wrong messaging. But the, the polling industry is 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 always adapting. You know, traditionally going back decades, it would have been face to face interviewing and then telephone polling, and now so much of what we do is online. And now there's new challenges with with AI and all sorts of all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. It's a constantly evolving sector. And think in that specific general election, you know, there was. A reassessment of how we how we do some of our sampling and making sure that we're getting enough of certain subsets of the population in our samples. It's a massive thing for the industry, and we're we're constantly our our own our own biggest critics and making sure that we're we're evolving and and keeping up with with the way that the industry is moving. On the point of social media compared to then, so we're now almost you know we're years down the line. And there's an explosion of how people are receiving their news and information. Any advice for people who use social media for their news, let's say, and who don't read newspapers um, at all, just don't pick up a broadsheet, what do they need to look out for if they suddenly see, you know, nine out of ten cats prefer whatever on Twitter or X as it now is? Social media is is a relatively new new phenomenon in terms of elections. You know, we were sort of past the period, but it felt like it was several elections in a row where it was sort of deemed the first sort of social media election. And we're still trying to figure out what what that means. And and in terms of looking at polls, I think Savannah is is an established pollster. We're a we're a member of the British Polling Council, and therefore we're we're obligated to meet certain criteria in our polls. One of those criteria is is publishing our data tables on our website so that if you see a headline, because obviously our polls go go beyond our own sort of we put them out on our on our social media, but they you know they're free for anyone to to take and run within what whatever way they want. And if you see something that says, you know, a Savannah poll says X, if you go on our website, you will be able to see those tables, you'll be able to look at them and scrutinize them and see, oh, actually, is someone misinterpreting that poll? Is someone taking the bit of that poll that they that fits their agenda and what they want to do. I mean, that's 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 one thing. You know, make sure you're looking at, at legitimate pol- polling organisations, ones that are transparent um, with what they're doing. Twitter polls, anything you see on Twitter is is an absolute no no for uh, from our point of view. Twitter is famously not not real life. The people who are on Twitter do not necessarily represent the people who are in the public. So people love doing polls on on Twitter and and running things um you know self selecting you know sending somebody a link saying complete this survey um there's no verification of of who those people are there's no method to put in place to make sure that those samples are, are representative and yeah just just being very very skeptical of, of a lot of the things you read transparency checking your sources um it's all kind of you know the same things that we would say for being being smart on social media and being sensitive to disinformation with it with anything and I'm guessing there is absolutely no way that that can be controlled. Yeah, you know, any, I, mean, I guess anybody can suggest that they've ran a poll and the polls say, yeah, we want to bring back Boris, let's just say as an example. Yeah, and I mean, we we, we even get people tweeting out saying, later Savanta poll says this, and we'll we'll have to be like, excuse me, we've not we've not done any polling to to indicate that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a real minefield of of misinformation, and it's often the interpretation of the polls that is is almost the bit the biggest part of the problem. People will will look at our data tables and they'll pick and choose the bits that suits that suits them, and they won't necessarily understand the full picture or want to understand the full picture. So yeah, it's it's really tricky, and it's. Something that, as a polling company, we kind of have to take take the rough with the smooth and and recognise that once we put our figures out there, they're kind of up to up to the public and up to people to use as as they wish. Let's say a political party comes to Savanta and says we want to run a poll, and obviously they will want the result of the poll to suggest 
that the public love them and they're super popular. Do you have to negotiate with them on, on the questions that they're kind of allowed to ask? Is there, ever, is there ever a situation where you say, we just, that's just not okay to ask that question? It's a massive part of the job. The, the, the key part is the question that you ask and a leading question can lead to, to a biased answer. And the reason why clients will commission us is because, as I said, we're a member of the British Polling Council. We do things by the book. A lot of clients will come to us and say, we don't know. We don't know what we want to ask. We want to, you know, roughly talk about these things. Can you help us design a question? And that's great. And we'll design a question with them. A lot of clients will say, these are our questions. Please, can you run them? And we'll say, no, not in those forms. We can change this wording. We can do this. We need to explain this terminology. Anyone can ask a question, but asking a, a balanced, fair question that's going to produce a fair result is a, is a skill in itself. It must be fascinating, really. <laughs> To see what see what they want to come along and ask. So here's the thing, right? When you see polling numbers, let's say I think your latest one was looking at 40% of voters were suggesting they would vote Labour. Lots of people then say, well, nobody asked me. Isn't that the classic polling yeah. answer? How does it work, the mechanics? The, the, that's the classic question no one's asked me. And 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 the way the way it works is 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 fairly it's fairly complicated but I'll, I'll try and simple it down as as much as i can you know we we have members of our panel who are get who get sent surveys and the voting intention surveys that we run is as i said you know before when i'm explaining how savannah works we're a small part of that people sign up to take part in surveys on all sorts of things consumer brands and 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 all sorts of it, you know we we have and we think that it's one of our strengths we have a, a panel that isn't necessarily a politically recruited panel we hold information on those people if we're you know looking to do a the classic case a nationally representative sample if we're as i was working on a poll this morning if we're short of young men we'll send it out to some young men and, and get them to complete it. And, and respondents receive a small a small incentive for, per survey that they complete oh. um, to take part. But yeah, broadly, it's about sending it to the right people, getting them to fill it in, checking that their, their data is legitimate and that they're not bots or they're not speeding through the survey and not reading the question properly, that they're providing consistent answers across the questions so that we can tell that these are actually their true beliefs. There's a lot that goes into it to get to those 40 45% labor figures as i said there's quotas to making sure that we're getting the right right types of people in the right numbers we then weight the data to make sure that if we miss any of those quotas we 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 sort of make sure that the final data then does still represents the public so there's a lot that goes into the into the the final package um, of the numbers that you might see on social media or in the papers and is there an actual number that says you really can't have a minimum you know you can't have less than a thousand people that's just that's just not okay 2000 has always been the, the sort of traditional sweet spot of of what is what is you know what most of most people do for a nationally representative sample there isn't there isn't a perfect number obviously it's one of those ones where obviously more more people should therefore mean more representative but up to a point and without making it without turning this into a sort of statistics lecture it, it the, the benefits of increasing your sample size diminish the larger it, the larger it increases and then obviously there's there's costs involved as well a larger sample size costs more money and clients will want to you know get something a bit more cost effective so in terms of minimum sample sizes again it depends on your population we don't like to do we we're quite hesitant about publishing anything less than than a thousand but again it depends on who you're wanting to speak to i mean we run we run surveys among mps themselves we have a, a, a well-established mps panel oh. there's only 650 of them we get about 100 within our sample so there's there's obviously it depends on the audience and what the, the population that you're that you're looking to speak to but yeah anything anything in a thousand plus is usually you know good enough to do good analysis does it surprise you? Have you ever done, have you ever run a poll yourself? Have you ever done any research yourself and thought, wow, I just wasn't expecting that? What's the most surprising thing if you can share it? What's the most surprising thing that result that you've had? 
Yeah, it's a good question. Um, sometimes the big surprising results are the ones that make you think, oh, something's gone wrong in the process. <laughs> yeah, we asked the wrong um, question. <laughs> yeah, we've we asked, asked all something. cat owners if they we, love cats. <laughs> yeah, we've asked something that, you know, something that's quite niche and all the public, you know, seem to know a lot about it. And you're like, is that really the appropriate question to ask? The, the period um, sort of following Partygate and then again in the... Um, following, you know, Truss's mini budget when we were seeing massive, and I mean, I was saying before, we've, we've been kind of seeing consistent results in our voting intention for a good year now. But during those periods where we were seeing, you know, week by week, massive swings, those were the ones where you would you would get the email to say, you know, these from our sort of data services team, you hear the tables and you'd, you'd click straight away because you were just fascinated to see to see what the what the damage was almost so I think those are the ones that are potentially you know the first time we we went from the, you know, being you know conservative lead to a labor lead and suddenly realizing that the, the picture had changed I think that those were those are really interesting times to be in the industry wow and for you then are you are you looking forward to the election I mean for pollsters does it just ramp up is it just like here we go yeah and I think it, the bit that you see is a small subset of everything that goes on. You know, suddenly every client wants to do some polling. Everyone wants to know what the figures are. Everyone wants to know how it impacts them and their sector. There's a campaign going on. Can we get our messaging out there? Can we put pressure on the candidates? Can we put pressure on the manifestos? So yeah, it's a really busy time, and it's a really it's also the time when people start googling you know, what are the polls saying. For most of the election cycle, we exist in a small subset where we have some very interested people who are very interested in, you know, the week by week. But for suddenly the eyes of the wider public are on, are on polling and what the polls are saying. It's an intense couple of months, but I guess the most rewarding as well. Do you ever rock up if you can to a camp just to see the fun on the night? Or do you sit at home with some popcorn and the rest? Personally, no. <laughs> oh, I've um, seen the results rolling. <laughs> I mean, I, I've only worked on, on one general election in 2019, but I know um, from those that have done many that it is kind of hiding hiding behind the sofa waiting for the exit poll and waiting to see, have we got it right? Have we got it broadly right? Do we have to start you know, preparing our defence? Those, kind of, those kind of things. So no, I haven't been down to account myself, but I know um, on election night we'll be, we'll be busy looking, looking at the polls and, and, and sort of cross-referencing with, with what we've done. And then I just wanted to round off then for a job job perspective. So obviously it's it's a heavily data driven statistical job, I'm guessing, polling, being a pollster. How did you find your way into this? And do, do you love it, first of all? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I love it. I've been doing it for, for, for a fair few years now. And I and I started I started doing this straight straight out of uni. I joined a, a graduate scheme at, at Comres and we kind of got showed the ropes of terminology, you know, quotas and waiting and what does that mean and how do you do it? In terms of core skills, obviously it can be very stats heavy, but also a lot of it can just be basic maths. Unsurprisingly, a lot of people who get into it have sort of politics backgrounds or, you know, interested in humanities. If, if any of that sounds sounds like you and then I'd, I'd strongly encourage people to, to look into it because it, it's a very varied job every day is different every client is slightly different yeah we do some really really interesting work well it sounds fascinating honestly thank you so much Emma for your time thank you for having me thanks for listening to episode two of politics and rollers and thank you again to Emma at Savanta for giving her time to all the pollsters out there good luck I hope you have a really good year any questions, do please send them in, happy to answer them. Hit subscribe and also don't forget to check out the Politics and Rollers playlist that I made. Happy to add your tracks to that as you wish. That's it for now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>